Hello everyone, in this example I want to look at predicting whether or not the entropy of this of various systems is going to either increase or decrease and the different factors that you need to consider in making such a prediction. Right, so I have a couple of processes that we need to look at, so let's just dive into them. Right, so the first process that I want us to look at or to consider is we're told that atmospheric water vapour condenses as dew, um, so to liquid water, at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. All right, so the basic idea here is we take water vapor, so of course that means it's gaseous water, so water in the gas phase, or vapor phase, and that then condenses to liquid water at zero degrees and one atmosphere. So meaning it is a process where gas condenses to water or liquid water to the liquid phase so vapor phase to liquid phase so if we want to represent that as such um, it is not a process that um, is at for example the boiling point or something like that the actual phase transition point of water so I'm not going to represent it as a reversible process. Um, so the question here is what is changing, right? We're going from a process or a system where our matter um, has the ability to disperse a lot more, right? In the, in the vapor phase, the water has the um, opportunity or has the ability to disperse a lot more. In other words, the energy also has the ability to disperse a lot more. And then going to the liquid phase, all of that matter and energy has to condense to go into the liquid phase. And that generally is therefore associated with a decrease in our systems, uh, the entropy of our system. So hence, this process specifically going from vapor to liquid, so in other words, gas to liquid, is generally associated with a decrease in the entropy of the system, right? Remember, we're looking at the system specifically. So just what is happening to the system, all right? And that is because we have a decrease in the amount of dispersion or the ability of the, the oh yes, the amount of dispersion in the system, right? So a gas has the ability to disperse energy and matter much more than what the liquid phase has. And of course, the liquid phase has the ability to disperse energy and matter more, more so than what the solid phase, of course, has again. Right, so that is our first process that we considered. Cool, so let's look at our next process. It says an exothermic reaction of aluminium solid and bromine liquid to form aluminium bromide solid. All right, so it means we have a reaction between aluminium and bromine. Um, so, I mean, you can balance the reaction if you want to, So, but um, if I can write it down here for us. So that is two aluminium plus three bromine liquid forms aluminium bromide solid. We're also given some information about it being an exothermic reaction, but that's not too relevant at the moment, because remember, we're looking at the system. The exothermicity of a reaction will dictate something about what happens to the entropy change of the surroundings, right? Because whether or not energy is heat is released or absorbed from the surroundings or to the surroundings, energy is released to the surroundings, will affect what happens to the to the surroundings, right? So for our system, we're more interested in where does our system start off and where does it end up? And if we look at this, right, we see that, well, we start off with a solid and a liquid and we end up with one mole of solid. So in principle, what happens here really is we go from a system whereby we have two different kinds of materials a so and it combines to give us only one type of material and also one of the type of materials that combines to give us a solid material is a liquid right and liquids have a far better um, um, ability
ability to disperse matter and energy than what solids have just because of their higher mobility and and so forth so in other words again this is a process where the change in the entropy of our system is less than zero all right so it's the same idea here we're going from a liquid to a solid we're also going from a more complex system to a, a, a less complex system we're going from a, a less ordered system to a more ordered system uh, meaning that there are more microstates in the less ordered system in more ways that that system can arrange itself and then to a less uh, a more ordered system so in other words less ways that that system can arrange itself because just it has less options right there's it just has one compounds so in other words it can find less ways to arrange itself okay so a decrease in that system's energy oh, yeah, not energy entropy otherwise we but for the system right just i mean it's uh, the exothermicity exothermicity will have an influence on the surroundings entropy right but that's not part of this question Woo. So let's move to our next process. This says the endothermic decomposition of solid calcium carbonate at 800 degrees Celsius to produce an equilibrium mixture containing calcium carbonate, solid calcium oxide, and gaseous CO2. All right, so let's write this equilibrium because it says it's an equilibrium mixture. And that means we have calcium carbonate, solid, which decomposes to give calcium oxide solid plus CO2 gas. And hopefully what you notice here is that we have a solid decomposing into, well, two species, but one of which of those species is a gas, right? So we're going from a highly ordered system to once to a system that contains some gas, right? And overall, we start off with only this, this solid, and then we end up with an equilibrium mixture of three species, right? A solid system, or this the calcium carbonate that we originally had, as well as two other um, materials, two other species. So that means this system definitely has an increase in its entropy because it has a, a several number of or several new ways of um, dispersing the energy and matter and, and in fact it has dispersed the matter right it by splitting up into two new um, compounds so calcium oxide and co2 it has dispersed the matter right it went from co co3 and it actually dispersed the matter into two new compounds. So that means immediately it has had an increase in its entropy. And um, by having three compounds at equilibrium, it means it has several options of uh, arrangement for its for the system. So uh, that means we expect, we expect to have the system have a positive entropy change associated with this process. All right. So, I mean, you get the general idea here, right? So we're first looking at things like solids versus gases. And then we, we can also look at, you know, how many options, I mean, how do we go from a minimal number of uh, microstates and you know, minimal number of compounds and things like that. All right. So let's look at uh, our next process, process D. We say it says one mole of silver chloride decomposes forming one mole of silver solid and 0 0.5 mole of chlorine gas. So that gives us a reaction. So it says silver chloride solid, one mole of it, decomposes to form silver solid plus half a mole of chlorine gas. And again, just like we had um, at the top there, even though the top was an equilibrium, in this case we have a we exp well, I mean, we, it suggests it's a full conversion. So we start off with this, and it fully converts into this. So even though there is still some solid here, again it splits into two species, and one of those species is a gas. 
So it means we start with a, with a highly ordered system, a solid, and it decomposes into a gas and a solid. So meaning there is a dispersion of matter in the sense of it splits into two species and it has splits with one of the species is a gas which has a higher or higher ability to disperse matter and energy right gases have a bit greater ability than solids to disperse in terms of matter meaning they're freely movable and they can disperse energy more freely because they um, they are they can collide and they can transfer energy much more freely than what a solid can all right so again we expect for this um, process to also have a positive change in its systems or in its entropy right because this system has it had had has had a positive change in its entropy because we went from a solid to um, at least one gas and to two different compounds okay so let's look at e it says the endothermic reaction of hydrogen gas and iodine gas, which produces an equilibrium mixture of hydrogen, iodine, and HI gas. Okay, so that means we're looking at the reaction or the equilibrium of H2 gas plus I2 gas forming an equilibrium with, and if you balance it, HI gas all right so this is the first time we actually had we have gas gas giving gas and even if we look at it in terms of right two mole of gas on the reactant side forms two mole of product gas all right so we can't really discern anything in terms of our mixture Initially, we mix H2 and I2 to give us a product, which is also a gas. There's two more of it being mixed. So my initial inclination here is to say that the entropy of our system doesn't really change, right? It's possibly approximately zero because we have a gas mixture initially. It forms another gas and there's not really more of this gas or you know like that it forms for example three mole of gas if we mix two mole of gas to form three mole of gas that would have meant that we had an increase in our system or if we mixed two mole of gas and only formed one mole of gas that would have meant we had a decrease in the dispersal dispersion ability of our system so hence we would have had a decrease in the entropy of our system but um, in this case, the systems, uh, there's the same amount of gas reacted and formed. And hence, the system doesn't really have the ability to disperse energy or matter more or less at the beginning or the end. You might argue, or you can argue, that we started off with only H2 and I2, so now which we only had that at the start, and then it produced an equilibrium mixture of H2I2 and 2I HI. So in other words, in principle, looking at it from a perspective of what did we have at the start, we only had two mole of gas, and then what would we end up with? We technically ended up with the sum of this, right? We ended up with four mole of gas. That you could say, yes, that as a process uh, had an increase in entropy. But written as this, uh, there is no um, favored side, right? It's, it doesn't really, um, th th this entropy changes uh, for the system is zero because there's no favored side. So uh, I don't want to go into too many details of that because our comparison here purely focuses on what do we mix and what do we get? We mix two gas, two mole of gas, and that forms two mole of gas, and there's no, um, the entropy change for that should be approximately zero because it's not like we're going from a solid to a gas or a liquid to a gas um, which is obviously um, an increase in dispersal power okay so you get the point right let's look at our final process which is f 
Um, that says solid sodium chloride dissolves in water forming a saturated solution. Right, so this means we take sodium chloride, which is a solid, and we then dissolve it in water. And if we dissolve sodium chloride in water, what do we form? Well, we form, we dissociate into its ions, right? So it will form sodium plus and Cl minus aqueous. And this is also an example of where we had a highly order, ordered system, which was in a solid form. It was then dissolved and it then um, formed a, it dispersed. So the system had an increase in entropy because we had a dispersion of matter, dispersion of matter, and the, this system has a higher ability to disperse energy and matter because these can move around, these ions can move freely around in um, solution because the ions can move around. They're not allowed to move around in this lattice. They're fixed in a lattice. So if you want to draw a little picture for yourself, a sodium chloride lattice would have all of these ions fixed in specific positions. Um, would have them fixed in specific positions and would not allow you to kind of move or even to move them around. What have I done now? Uh, I'm need to be um, So they would be fixed, whereas in a solution, right, they're just floating about. So your little sodium ions are wherever they are and your chloride and ions are free to do whatever they want. So that means we clearly should have had an increase in this system's entropy here, going from left to right. Okay, so that's the general point. Um, that we expect for processes and how we look at processes. Of course, going from solids to liquids to gases, we expect an increase. Opposite, we expect a decrease. Um, and of course, solivating species, we also expect an increase. Anything that leads to more dispersion, less order, um, in general, have lead to an increase in our system's entropy. All right, cool. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.